Are you ready to get woke? Welcome to the Woke as F*** podcast with your host, Alex Lazarev. So, you're an alien. Mm -hmm. I knew you were an alien the first moment I saw you. I was like, this guy's not from here. And me neither. I come from a place far, far away. A very different place than here. And... Because we come from a place with much higher vibration, like we we come from societies that are evolved. Mm -hmm. This is an unevolved society. Very much so. That's the simple truth of it. We're just um, we're like kindergarten kids. It's like how can you even be mad? Are you mad at the at the at the three year old when he knocks over something and a vase and breaks it? He's three. He doesn't know shit. How can you even be angry at a child? Humanity is at a, about a two years old level now. Two years old. And when you realize that is what's happening here, you can't be mad. Yeah. They're, they're, so so when you come in, right, and you and me both, we both came in to raise the, the frequency and the consciousness. That's why we came. We came on a mission. So as difficult it, it is to, to be here because we see around us the suffering and the craziness and the programming that it's basically um it's a planet running on fear mm -hmm. fear lack everything that we are not this planet is running on that it's the easiest way to put it the opposite of the ultimate truth of reality which is love abundance oneness wholeness that is the truth that is the ultimate truth at the highest level planet earth the opposite all the opposite violence fear control lack um greed and it's all it basically it's a planet based on separation getting the most for me because i'm separate from you and i want to get the best deal for me I, uh, survival all of this separation so when you come from like the planet i'm from i've had some some communication it is absolutely just divine beings i, I am a divine being. this is the realization i am a divine being yes. everything happens in synchronicity there's no mistakes everything just is and you just are <laughs> My whole place, like dimension, I come from, is just divine beings. There's no, there's no people starving. There's no, there's none of it. None of it. Everyone is one. There's all one love. Everybody takes care of everybody. It's, it's just so, it's so beyond anything that's even possible in our imagination. Being in a human body, there's no words to describe this type of reality. And in that reality, this is hell. Or at least that most people, where they're, what they're doing, how they're living is basically hell, hell on earth. Not living your truth, being in fear, being in lack, that is hell. And that is absolutely possible on this planet. On the other flip side, absolutely, that, that what I'm talking about from where I come from is also possible here. But where it happens is on the inside. This is where it starts. And when we get ourselves to that point, then we can we can start shifting what's around us. So getting back to your situation and how you feel now, it is difficult and it has always been, I mean, I literally just went through exactly what you're talking about. This is what I've been going through. Exactly it. Not fitting in. I didn't fit in as a child. I knew I was different then. I was just could not fit in. Nothing made sense. Nothing made sense. The way things are being run and everything that I saw, I was like, why are you doing, everything is wrong. Yeah. Everything was wrong. And they thought I was fucked up. No, the world is fucked up. I'm fine, you know? And so, and boy, has it been fucking crazy getting to, to this point here, right? Survive, even just surviving, being a fucking space alien who comes from an enlightened fucking civilization to come here has been... It's a trip. <laughs> it's, 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 it's many of us kill ourselves. True. Many of us don't make it. They turn to drugs, drink. So many of the people you see that are fucked up, they're just they're just higher level beings that got lost and couldn't make their way out. And in a way, it's okay, like because they're we're all immortal. There's no death anyway. We're all one. It does. It's just an illusion. So even the beings that came and got fucked and ruined their human lives, it doesn't matter. They'll just go back and go, oh wow, I fucked up on that mission. Oh well, let's go again. It's okay, but it is a shame. It is a shame. This this this. Uh, I think things have gotten a little out of control on this planet 
the, you know, even even though they're supposed to be like the opposite of love for for us to recognize who we are and love and all this is supposed to be, but I think it got a little bit carried away here, and we've had some interference with dark beings who are also coming to fuck with us, and I think now there's going to be a massive realignment to back to the good where it's possible for you know everyone to discover themselves. But anyway, uh, going on a tangent. So how do we as 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 enlightened souls survive being a human? to actually become who we are in this human form. And that's basically what I've been doing for 39 years now. 39 years of healing, trauma, human trauma, trauma from my parents, society, getting rid of all these beliefs, getting out of fear, discovering the universe is a consciousness, that God is a consciousness, that it is one with me, that you can have communication with it, that it is there to support you, that prayer works, that it is real as long as your heart is open and you are conscious and you're, and you're having this relationship with, 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 with the divine. But it takes a while to get there. It, it takes a while, really. And when, when you have not yet fully integrated into the, how things really work, and you have not yet dealt with your trauma, it is difficult to function because we're not 100% living our purpose fully because we can't be. It's impossible because we, we've not yet processed even just how to be a human. You know, it, it's really, really difficult to get to your high level purpose when you're still like, okay, I have to make money and I'm still fucked up and I got mommy issues and like I can't love correctly and my heart is closed and, and, and my health is fucked up because I'm eating all these chemicals and blah, 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 blah. So we are so, the whole system is created to have us so confused and so damaged and so in survival mode, it's almost impossible to get enough healing done to just start discovering the truth of our being. That's the system that we're in. It's a brutal, brutal system. But if it makes anyone feel better, one of the realizations I had a while ago was that the matrix as it is, is so beautiful because it forces you to wake up. And and, and if you and, and it's so powerful because when if you can wake up out of this as it is, you will slingshot so far the other way that it'll be would have been worth it suffering in this matrix because it is actually here if you look at it this way it is actually here for our awakening and the joy and this is it this is why i'm happy that i came and i'm happy that i was fucked up and all these things because the joy of breaking free and healing and discovering your true nature is the greatest thing in the world it is so joyful remembering who 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 i am unbelievable every day remembering more and more it's fucking that remembering that you are all that is and that you are not a person, that you are not this suffering, that you are abundance and joy and love and peace, it is fucking epic and it's worth it. It's worth it. It's and worth all the suffering I've gone through, it's all been worth it for this, what's happening now. That's the truth. Here, you talk for a while, I talk too much. But it can be difficult at times. I feel like it's hard for me to stay positive because the dark forces, like, it seems like they're very strong. I don't know if they're getting stronger or not, but for me, it is a battle to stay positive and really believe in the the good things to come. Because right now, things are difficult. Uh, integrating this human experience is very strange. And I've been trying to uh, escape this reality, just like not be here through drugs and other things. And, and I just realize more and more that this is not the way to go. It's like be here as much as you can and integrate yourself as best as you can. There's no way out and uh, you have to go through it and do what you came to do here. But it's not for me, it's not easy. So I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. And even though this is probably going to be on the Walk as Fuck podcast, answer honestly. What is your relationship to the divine? It's a little bit difficult to answer because I definitely have a good relationship to it, but I feel like I'm I'm rebelling a little bit against it. I feel like I'm maybe like a spoiled kid expecting more from the divine, more support. But at the same time, I'm also seeing that I could be doing more as well. Like I I cannot expect to just be carried through the experience, right? And it's a little bit what I'm expecting. So this is what I have to work on and I'm doing. Uh, 
but the universe can totally support you and if you need it so yeah so here here here's what I'm what I'm getting there's yeah like you said it yourself it's like you you know the ultimate truth you know but you're resisting I'm resisting yeah you know it's possible to have it all yeah. the flow the love a great life without any stress you know yeah. why are you resisting it that's why i don't know that's what i'm wondering like i wonder why i'm resisting it because it's such a like why would you resist the most beautiful thing ever and i think oh this is i guess still some kind of programming where i'm not used or I, I don't feel like it's allowed to feel that way, right? Because we come from a trauma-based control system and feeling great is not in your nature, it seems. Like you, you've been manipulated to the point where feeling good is doesn't feel right. Like you're, feeling you're doing something wrong. Do you feel guilty or, or bad when you feel great? I, I would say deep down, no. But I get the mind might feel guilty or bad or something. I don't think it is me in my core. I mean, it's starting to sound to me just like a simple worthiness issue. Like you just don't feel worthy of the divine bliss and love and joy and peace that's waiting for you. Because here... Yeah, um, maybe. Maybe. Because here, here, here's the thing. Like, you don't have to do anything to be worthy of it. You're worthy of it because you exist. There's nothing you have to do. You are. I, you, if you can say, I am, and even ponder what that means, that you exist, you are part of the divine. You are worthy. There's nothing you have to do. The love is just there. It's unconditional love from the divine at all times. Only you can come up with a story or a reason why you, why you can't feel it, why you're not worthy of it. You're always worthy of it. And you've had just a few days ago the, the, how you got back here. It was a fucking, by any terms, it was a miracle. You prayed for it and it came immediately because it was, it was for the benefit of you and other beings. And as long as what you ask for and truly pray from the heart is doesn't interfere with other beings' plans, if it's for the greater good, generally it comes it comes to pass unless there's something you need to get first or there's something out of alignment. But if it is truly good and you have faith, it does come to pass. And you know this. Yeah. So I'm realizing something now. I feel like uh, I'm learning that I just have to do my part as well in this. And I cannot just rely on on like a free pass or something like this. I don't know how to better describe it, but I need to learn my discipline and other things to have a functioning human vehicle. This is the base for everything else. And I've been this is what I've been resisting. And I'm coming around on it now and working on it. And for the first time I actually feel like I can do this this time. Uh, and it's it's very interesting for me to actually take care of myself 100% because this this has been what I've been learning, I think for a long time now <laughs> and it's so strange to learn how to take care of yourself it's like why are you not why do you not love yourself enough or why do you not feel worthy enough to take care of the one thing that's most important to you yourself you mean the physical the physical the mental too happiness content Yeah, I mean, I guess that's the big question, right? It's like we're 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 so disconnected. We we don't even prioritize loving ourselves, and feeling good in the body, having mental clarity. It's like we're just we just believe that suffering is okay and everything's fucked, and you just we're, we're so busy just trying to survive. And it's almost like the standard has become as long as we as long as we're surviving, right? So as long as we can eat and we have a place to sleep. You know, and a cell phone, it's okay, you know, could be worse. I mean, really, that's the, that's the, that's the, we're, we're living in a could be worse, negative, fear-based society. 
somebody there's starving. always somebody starving to death so hey if you even if even though you're working at burger king and you live in a basement you know you're eating you're eating and you have water and you have a place to sleep so it could be worse but that is not our nature could be worse is not our our, our is it, it is not who we are it's just not that's that a being who who has that attitude is 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 a limited being based a fear based being i'm afraid of what could be worse so i'll accept the mediocrity or shitty situation that i'm in now but a divine being goes no no i'm already complete i am love every we're all one let's share whatever we have and help each other because love is the truth love is all there is and i can feel that love and be connected to the divine to the divine no matter what my situation is i am that love and from that place you create and you won't be working at burger king and living in a basement very long if you come from that place you just won't it is it's literally just a process of waking up to the truth the truth of the universe god the truth of your being that's it and once you really recognize the truth there is no there is no fear or depression anxiety none of it yeah. it's all an illusion it's all part of the the, the 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 trauma the programming it's not real but yes something you said uh wanted me to say it is a it is a a partnership with god that we're all in it is a two way partnership god's not going to do everything for us because even though we are God, it's we're still playing a, uh, a character here, and so we have a role as this part of God, and God has the role. So He, God, there is is, is does give us these opportunities for self growth, and they've actually shown if you watch Tom Campbell's videos, he's actually shown how it actually works, and that it's random, but then certain things will generate for your experience that could lead to your higher spiritual evolution if you choose to take it. And we've all seen those things. Oh, what a coincidence that they met that person. The odds of that person having been there at that moment was about a million to one. And yet I met them and it changed my life. Well, guess what? That person was there for a reason. It was for you. And these things are, everyone is, no, at this point, everyone is noticing this stuff, you know? So so God is doing God's part. Okay. But but we as the soul, we've, we, we've made an agreement to come down here and do something. And it's our job to do that thing. So so if part of that has to be, before we can live our true purpose, if part of it is going through the human trauma, healing, all these things, getting rid of the negative beliefs, and all this, if we have to go through this shit show in order to do our job here, then that is what we must do, playing this, this fucking role. It's a role, but we're here to do work. This is our job. Your job isn't being a camera guy or, 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 or whatever. My job isn't, uh, wait, wait, you know, the thing that I do, the job, the purpose is the job. You know what I mean? The, tr the purpose is the job. And even if you're working in Burger King, that's great. That's something for money. But your job is your life's purpose, which is God knows what. But that's what we're here to do. And God does give us those opportunities to find our way to our purpose. But we have to do the work. Even when we recognize the truth, we still have to do the work. We still have to do the work. I've been working my ass off for years. I had my first enlightenment experience uh, in 2009 when I knew I was all with all beings and I'm here to wake people up to reincarnation and there's no such thing as death and we're all one. 2009, almost 10 years ago. Did I stop there? Oh, well, that's it then. No, I've been working my fucking ass off. Plant medicines, fucking other drugs, horrible experiences, brutal breakups, crying, fucking almost dying on, on, on fucking bad plant medicine trips, fucking uh, trauma break. Like just hor it's been a fucking a horrific shit show for me to actually get to the truth of, of, of who I am. Ten years, almost ten years of searching. Ten fucking years. And it's not over. But boy, is it a lot better than it was. You know, it's like, it's, it's great. Amid a period of like, it's great. Life is great. That's never over. But you got to put the work in. Correct. Stop being the lazy fucking piece of God. Correct. Yeah, I think this partnership realization is huge for me. That this is actually a partnership you have to... It's not a free ride. It's know. not a free ride. No. No, and also I guess you're building. You have to build up to your capacities physically and mentally, so that you can actually do your work, whatever the work is that you were brought here to do. And that's what I'm realizing right now. I know that I have a huge do thing to do here, and I I have an idea about it. 
but I've been resisting it big time. And I, yeah, I just realized that there's no room for me to create a story around it. I just have to go through what is kind of expected from me, what I signed up to come here for, and then everything will flow from there. But it, it took me a long time to come around to this realization. Because I've, I've been very resistant. And I don't know where this is coming from. I think I was just like very confused about this whole deal here. Uh, and I still am to a point where I'm not 100% committed to just doing it and not o thinking about it, trying to figure it out more or get more clarity on it or receive more signs or whatever it is that I, I would like to get to be more sure about this or more motivated. But what I'm also realizing is that there's I don't need any more signs like I can actually just like decide, okay, I'm good now. I don't need to waste time about this anymore. I can just move on and move forward. So I hope from from now on I can just like be more efficient with this. Hold it here. Yeah. Um just 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 clean your clean the house. You have to clean the house. You can't get that greater clarity of purpose and be clean enough to do it. You have to clean your shit. That's what it is. It's a cleaning. And actually, I had this I had this realization a while ago, not that long, a few months ago, where I was joking around with people. I made a video about it that I just never put up. Um, but it was that my job is a cleaner. Yeah. People ask me, what do you do? I'm a cleaner. What do you mean? I clean shit. What do you mean? Toilets? No, my own shit. I just clean it. That's really what we're... We're all cleaners until we get to a certain level where we're pretty clean, and then, okay, now you can start on your purpose, helping other people while still cleaning your own shit. You know? I don't know if you can ever get to a level where you're like, I'm done. Maybe. Maybe you can get to like 99% done, but there's still going to be that some level of cleaning. Yeah, there's, there's always going to be some type of maintenance you have to do. Yeah. But, yeah, so it just so that's all, maybe that's all the self-realization is or has been for me it's just like i've just done enough cleaning now where i'm coming more and more in, into the that i can feel the absolute truth which was always there it's not like i wasn't everything before you know but i was too fucked up so as i'm cleaning now i'm like oh okay yes now i can see all right great i'm still gonna clean but boy do i feel a lot better now so that comes first and that comes first and that's why i took oh, basically a two-year or more maybe two and a half, three years or something, spiritual hiatus where I just went down the rabbit hole of cleaning and who I am and what is God and all these things where I slacked off on my businesses and my, you know, my, even my spiritual podcast. People were like, bro, what happened? You haven't been putting up episodes. Yeah, I was too busy cleaning. I was too busy cleaning to go interview people or worry about the website or any of these things. I was just, I couldn't, you know, the, the priority was, was cleaning my shit and finding out myself. Now, Boy, there's going to be some fucking crazy episodes coming out. There's going to be a lot of great things happening because now I have the energy and the clarity to do to, to to live who I am. But I've been cleaning for ten years, almost ten years, nine years, nine years of a shit show to get here. And only the last couple years, like hardcore, like you know. So how long have you been? Do you even feel your hardcore cleaning? No, you're a half-assed sort of here and there when it's convenient cleaner. That's the thing. That's your fucking problem. Yeah, I'm, I'm half-assing a lot of things, but also I, I think that I've been cleaning for some seven years or so. It's been a while already. Uh, so at sometimes with more intensity than others, and I feel like in this last year it's been very intense again after the preferred initiation. Uh, but I'm fighting this process. <laughs> I'm not convinced because I don't feel like I, I want to go down one path too much. I would like to be off this world and not escape too much in some kind of other reality. Uh, yeah, so I'm trying to find a balance between the two. So for me, it's been cleaning the shit as a human. You have to. Because the human, which we are now, is fucked. So you clean that. But as you clean, guess what starts happening? The divine 
starts to open up, whether it's from here or here or whatever, but the divine starts to come in and the clarity starts to come in. Sometimes in peaks, like moments here and there, you know, I had my first kind of like no person event uh, in London just two months ago where my, I literally, there was no person. It only lasted, I don't know, 40 minutes or something. I mean, less than an hour. But that was like, a, a oh, fuck, okay. And just kept cleaning, reading more books, blah, 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 praying more, all these things I've been doing. And then now I had a week as God, just a week of like no person, no person. And it's going to, you know, whatever. Let's just see how it goes. But I'm just, but now it's not like, oh, well, I'm done now. No, I'm going to keep cleaning. Now I'm working on the physical body. You know, it's been a lot of the, the relationship with the divine and my purpose. I feel that's very good now. So now it's like the physical body. It's not bad. I mean, I'm okay, but I got tension. I'm holding on to from my childhood. Serious trauma that my body's holding on to. So now that's my priority. For me, that's my cleaning now. I don't know how long I'll be cleaning there. Months, years, but I'm going to keep doing it. It's never over. So for you, it's like what part of your cleaning now do you know is the is the thing you need to work on? Is it the relationship with the divine? Is it self-love? Is it the physical body? Is it faith? I mean, what is it? That's what you need to go, and you need to go 100% on this thing whatever it is right now and the rest will come the purpose the alignment comes but you need to clean this so what is it well, feel into it for a second before you say well i know what it is uh i think mainly it is uh, my brain chemistry so i think my connection to the divine is pretty good i have a pretty steady connection and all those things the thing that i've been slacking off about is mm, myself my physical body my mental body the physical body is pretty okay since the preferring initiation, although I could, could could go deeper into being clean and stuff like this, uh, but definitely the mind is in my way a lot. I'm too addicted to dopamine hits and not uh, working on my serotonin level. So this is something that I'm 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 gonna fix now. And there's many like maintenance things like daily exercise and stuff like this that I'm not taking care of. Where do I go from here? So maintenance, so physical, working on the physical body. Yeah, I'm trying to uh, kind of repeat it maybe. In, uh, well, I know that my uh, relationship to the divine is pretty okay, I would say. I check in on a, on a steady basis and I'm very connected with it throughout the day. It's what I need to work on most is myself in terms of taking care of myself, the physical aspects, the mental aspects. And actually, I'm going to start a uh, regiment to work on this for the next 30 days where I'm going to be doing many biohacks to work on the brain chemistry. And I'm slowly, I think what it's turning into is making my lifestyle more into a yogic lifestyle where I'm just not buying into all those dopamine traps and stuff like this um, so that I can be free from all the temptations. So when you mean, you mean, you mean eating or sex or what dopamine traps are, are the ones that are fucking with you or weed? It's like um, most things out there can be classified as a dopamine trap from food to sex and stuff like this but uh, we as a society were used to just rely on those things instead of those things that give you happiness and contentment over the long term. We like to have short-term pleasure instead of long-term happiness. And for me, it's social media, just like I got a computer when I was 12 and since then spent way, way, way too much time in front of the computer. Uh, being dependent on Facebook and YouTube, new information, whatever, to feel stimulated and Nat nature is not stimulating you anymore and then the weed habit came in and I'm glad that I didn't start when I was a teenager like a lot of Americans do uh, but I've gone pretty deep into it and this has been a pattern of renunciation renunciating myself from this world or trying to escape this reality, like be in my own kind of cloud and not, not care about things because this reality is so strange, I don't want to be in it. Um, and I, I feel like at this point, it is very difficult for me to be functional from a brain chemistry perspective. Um, and it was interesting to see this extreme opposite right after the preferring initiation where there was no mind games anymore that would drive me into weird behavior like I was not thinking 
uh, maybe maybe I need to find a girlfriend right now to be happy or something like this. Maybe I need to do this and that. There was just peace in my inside my mind. Um, so I know, I feel like I've been exploring both sides. I know the clean side, and I know the the kind of the not clean, confused side of being addicted to substances or st like other kind of stimulations. So it's for me, I feel like I, I like to go in and out of things to learn more about them. And now I have to go back into the light again and clean myself up again. And and this time I feel like I can prolong this, the clean phase. Mm. But for some strange reason, I don't see myself cleaning up forever. This is hard for me to accept still because maybe I'm not clean enough to see this possibility. I cannot hold that vision yet, frequency-wise. Well, it's it's interesting because maybe the reason you you know you felt so, remember you, this guy. I mean, he he was on top of the world after we did the breatharian initiation. He was he we were we walked into town one day afterwards, and it was like beyond words. We were in such a high frequency, like people were just like moving slow and they were just we could just see people's patterns and how fucked they were and we were just like in this just light loving it was just like we weren't really people anymore it was weird it was like i don't know and i, I think the reason maybe that you felt that way was because um you weren't getting any dopamine hits because you know we weren't eating we weren't fucking we weren't drinking water for for three and a half days we weren't doing anything except just being in, in presence of each other and supporting each other and so and opening up. So that is your natural state without those <clears throat> without those dopamine hits. That that is literally your state with nothing coming in, no toxins, nothing coming in, just just your being. That was you and God hanging out and nothing else. That's what that was. And even now you're resistant to doing this reset, which you can do for free. Which is strange to me. Like <laughs> How can you be resistant to such a beautiful state? And uh, I think I've said this here or already, but it seems like this is something we've been trained to do. Like we're trained to not be able to hold a happy state. I guess uh, physically also it makes sense. Like if your vibration is low enough, you're not able to hold a happy state. And it feels strange to you to be happy. And you, you, you're so used to being depressed and all these things that you don't actually want to be happy because it's so strange. And that's that's a weird phenomenon to grasp. Like, why is it so hard to be happy, even though you can just be happy? Like, you're not allowing yourself to be happy for any cost. I mean, we're talking about the human condition here, right? This is some really profound shit. People not allowing themselves to be happy. And this is the this is literally the most important question, because and I've you know I've I thought about this before. It's like I I know that I can just choose to be happy, but it's so hard to it has been so hard to do so many times because of why, well because of problems right because i have problems or i don't have something that i want right or you know so many this person's an asshole and this guy fucked me over this, this guy owes me 1200 bucks and he's, he's like you know it's en it's endless the reason why is there en the endless so the question becomes i mean i i think i, I kind of have the answer but it's it's so it's so difficult to because fr from where i'm at now could just tell you this is, this is how you'd be happy but to get there well like i said nine years of cleaning shit but here's the answer <laughs> after nine years of cleaning shit drop the story all of it all of it every problem every worry all of it drop all of it none of it is real you're creating it and just bring your attention and attention uh, attention and an intention to god the fact that you are it work on that connection recognize that you are the divine that you're here on a divine purpose and if you really connect, because it's disconnection, all those worries and fears and trauma, all that stuff, it's all disconnection. So when you actually connect back to source and you recognize, oh, this is me, the rest kind of just melts away. 
And even if you just have a moment of that, can, this is why people have these, you know, they'll do mushrooms or something, or they'll do acid for one time, but they'll have that connection, that reconnection to the divine, and, they'll, and then it goes away, right? How long's a mushroom trip? You know, eight hours, maybe 12, hours, whatever. You come back. And, but because you felt that, it affects your whole life because you go, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. And then you change. So that needs to be the goal. Forget all your problems. Connect, re get reconnected to source. That should be the goal, the goal of all humans. But again, even even the programming around that makes it like, no, no, they're trying to convince us there's no there's no source. It's random. We're just stupid monkeys. There's no God. Uh, maybe there's, maybe there isn't, whatever. But like, but the, the, literally the programming is that, you know, you're a person. You're a person and you have to do certain things to fit into society, to be safe, to be okay. You need to do X, Y, Z. And it's all a lie. Every aspect of it is a lie. Every single thing, all of it. There's no aspect of what we're being told that is actually the truth. There is only one truth. You are the divine. You are a spiritual being having a human experience. And when you reconnect to that truth of who you are, the entire experience here changes. And, and you can then come from a place of creation and love and bliss and truth and uh, and become part of this revolution to transform the planet. That is the, the only truth that is real, is that truth. Everything else is a lie. And it sure will be a fun planet when, you know, 10% of us are awake to this, or 20%, or 30%, 50 and then eventually everybody. It's going to be great. That's what's happening. It's just a question of how long do you want to continue suffering until you accept the, the, real, the, the, the real truth of your being? How long? Another week? Year? 10 years? 30? Or till the day until you exit the human body and you, re you reunite with source, then you'll go, oh, everything is okay. Yeah, that's going to happen anyway. Uh, in the end, everyone will realize everything is fine. You will, but you're here for a while. Do you want to have a great time waking people up to this truth, or do you want to just continue being a person, stuck in your personal problems? That's the only choice, really, that there is to be made. I made my choice. Boris, are you ready to make your choice? I think I'm almost there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm almost there. It's such a strange process for me, but I'm um, although I'm suffering a lot, my story is like I, I like to create suffering for myself. There is enjoyment still, <laughs> and I think actually the way I'm creating my story is in a way where, like the first part is a lot of suffering and stuff like this, but then I manage to turn it around like in a hundred eighty percent, a hundred eighty degree fashion. Where now I feel like I'm not living. I'm almost not living at all. Like I'm, I'm pretending to live or something like this. Whereas n after this kind of switch, I'll be just like full on. It's like I'm charging now, and then when I'm fully there, things will just be insane. Can I give you a shortcut? I don't know if it's going to work for sure, but you can try. Yeah. I remember saying this to. It was either you or it was uh, another friend, Ramses. It might have been you. <clears throat> or I said, no, 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 sorry. It was Henry who was on the podcast recently. It was, on, it was Henry. The process of surrendering, it takes a while. A little bit more and more, you start to trust and let go of things that don't surrender. It's, it's a process. But it is possible to just jump, to jump off the cliff. Just go, fuck it. I completely trust the universe. Go ahead, take me away. Even if it means I'll lose everything in my job and my house where I live, I know that even if I end up just sleeping on a friend's floor on some shitty fucking cushion, that's okay. That's okay. But I completely trust. Let the universe... Um, fuck it. I trust it. Completely. Let go. And it can be done. I don't think I did that. I, 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 I was. It was a process. Here, more and more and more and more. Oh, I am God. Oh, more and more and more. And now I'm at a place, pretty much where I'm a place where I'm very close to just being like, Fuck it, I'm, you know, I'm just a servant of of the divine, and there's there's, there's nothing for me to decide. I'm just going to do what I'm doing. Um, so you can make a big leap, and the big leap is just it's just it's what we talked about before. It's not just a decision to know God and know the truth and know who you are. It's that you're going to fucking work your ass off now to live it, to to really realize it. You have to go gung ho, books, meditate, anything, just f anything that brings you into that. Being around those beings, reading books by enlightened beings, dude, reading David, like uh, Hawking's books, you know, Power versus Force, and 
reading conversations with God, autobiography, autobiography of a yogi, and other books on these, it fucking raises you up. You cannot read because there's an energy that comes through an enlightened being when they write. So it pulls you up. It raises your frequency. Doing uh, fasting brings you closer to the divine. What you eat and put into your body, working out, breathing exercises, um, all of these things, they work. They bring us closer to source. But you have to put the work in. I think that's where you're at, making that choice that you want to you want to get absolutely aligned and doing the fucking work and bringing and, and and you feel the thing is the payoff is immediate as soon as you make that decision and you start working you're reading these books and it enters your heart this love this higher frequency this this truth of our being you start to feel it you start feeling better lighter you want to help more people you see that homeless guy you usually ignore you're like oh, I can give him a dollar I can give him two you know you you start to feel that abundance because it is it is the truth of who we are you know and you start, and you start practicing it you know I took a taxi. Um, you know, the other day, <clears throat> I, I missed a flight because I'm retarded. Um, and so I had to take a, 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 I took a taxi from Cuenca to here. So we negotiated a price, 120 bucks, you know, which is a lot of money. But I really wanted to get back here. I'm not going to take the bus. I was like, fuck this. I'll just pay the money. But, but in that process that I've been realizing, it's like that guy is me. The cab driver is me. We're all one. And because I'm in abundance and I know I can afford it, I didn't give him $120. I gave him $150. I was like, here you go, man. You worked hard. You got kids, right? Yeah, good. This is for your kids. Enjoy it. Because I'm fucking God. I'm totally abundant in everything. I can give away money and it doesn't matter. Everything I need will always come back. I know this now. But it's now living it because there's still that person part of me that's like, no, no, don't be an idiot. You only have like, you know, 1500 bucks left. And then you're going to have to move money into this account. So, you know, just give him the 120 And but But God is going, no, man. Come on. Just give him some more. And it's that choosing. Who am I going to be in this moment with this cab driver? Who am I going to be with any the next person who has, asks me for help or my advice or my time? Who am I going to be? Am I going to be the limited being that, oh, yeah, you know, my advice is worth a lot. You want me to sit here and help you for 20 minutes? You know, people pay me for, it, for my time. Or the unlimited being that's like, of course I'll help you if I can because you're me. We're one. Who am I choosing to be in every single moment? And it's still a choice because even though I've had this realiza self-realization, I'm still a person. And there are still all those remnants of these these fear-based thoughts and lack and stuff. But it's melting away so quickly that and, and so consciously that at this point I can choose to be the divine version of myself. I choose to be my higher self, not the person that I've been here as a human being. It's a choice. And I've made my choice. And I continue to make my choice in every single moment in every interaction I choose. I choose who I am. It's up to me. Because I am. I am. Yep. True story. It's a good podcast, right, folks? The Woke as Fuck podcast is legit. And it's my fault. It only has a small cult following because I've been on the spirit and I couldn't I couldn't do the work. I've been on too much working on myself. But I think I think more people are gonna like videos like this. Don't you think, Boris? The people that want to hear this? For sure. The need is growing and growing for this kind of information. Yeah. It's funny calling it information because it's just it is the truth. There's no, it's information. No, it is the reality. It is the, it is the ultimate reality of our existence. That's what this is. But when the entire system is built to hide that reality, yes, it's sure is not in interesting. Oh boy, that's an interesting podcast. <laughs> it's not a fucking podcast. It's just the truth. It's the truth podcast. I just call it the woke as fuck as I thought it was funny. Woke as fuck podcast. I might have to rename it. Well, I hope this dialogue has been um, in some way helpful. I hope so, too. I meant for you, but also for the people out there. <laughs> for me, it was. <laughs> and it, it occurs to me, too, like, you know, because the, the, the idea of the podcast was, was to interview anyone on the path to spiritual enlightenment. But, uh, you know, I, I've sort of um, just realizing now that yeah, I should get more more of a diverse amount of people who are on all, are all, on all levels, not just people who are already like, you know, like you're on the path, I'm on the path. We're all on the path. So before I was like trying to, I'm like, I'm trying to get Muji on the podcast. I'm trying to get all these, you know, enlightened. But now I'm like, I was trying to get uh, Matt Kahn on it uh, and all this kind of stuff, which 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 may still happen. But um, it's actually just that I think that what's cool about it is talking to people like you, just no, fucking cool, normal people who, who, are, who are working through the shit as everyone is. Because people, I think people will benefit massively from hearing your story because a lot of people out there probably smoke weed and are also you know what I mean there's a lot of people who are, will listen to you and go this fucking guy yes this is just like me so I think there's a huge power in just interviewing various people so I'm actually super inspired to um, do more of these and uh, 
talk to more people. It's really interesting. With video now. Look at this camera. Huh? Isn't that great? So, yeah. Any last uh, final thoughts? And I guess we'll wrap it up. Well, mm, I guess not really. What's next? What's next for Boris? What are you going to do next? What's coming up for you? Well, I'm cleaning myself up, and I hope from then on I can stay fairly clean and not not uh, fall into the traps of toxic food and chemicals and stuff like that. And I want to dedicate this next year to really uh, progress as much as I can in my life. And I know where things are going to, and I'm I'm actually really excited. <laughs> I haven't been, even though I don't look very excited, I haven't been this excited for a long time. Um, and by the way, just, just so people know, tell the people just a little bit about like who you are, your passion and, and what you do for work. And uh, and it, yeah, just so people have an idea of like, who the fuck is this guy? Because we went, we went straight into just like, we're recording. Who the fuck is this guy? Who knows? So tell the people a little bit about your story. Sure. So I I am in my heart, I'm a musician, but it it took me a long time to realize this and to really believe in this. So I, I distracted myself for a long time with uh, computer science and programming, and I have a degree in computer science because I thought I need this to feel secure about my life. Uh, but then I, I quickly couldn't do this anymore, and I started doing things that were fun for me and were pa- what I was passionate about, like filmmaking and stuff like this. So now I'm kind of like I'm a video guy, an online marketer, but I'm slowly transitioning into music that's the overall plan and i'm i've realized many things about this uh, for example that i i i can't just jump into this and without feeling secure about this move because this kind of pressure would break me i think i've tried this a couple times so my approach now is to f- build a financial base so that i can without any pressure do my music thing and I think within this next year, I can come very close to it. I've been working on this for a long time. And I think mainly the work that I do is in terms of my personality and my belief systems and stuff like this. So it's a lot of subconscious and mental work that I do. But I feel very close now. And I think in a in a good year, I can be either very close or in the position that I want to be in, in terms of music. So I'm, I'm really excited. Nice. So if someone's uh, down here in Vilcabamba uh, and you want to work with Boris on some music, or maybe you want to give him some editing work, but I think he's got enough. Uh, how do people reach out to you? What if somebody What if somebody loves you and wants to reach out to you? What do they do? Well, uh, there's a really beautiful lady out there, and she's like, "Something about this Boris guy. I don't know what it is, but I really like him a lot, and I want to meet. I want to meet him. What, what would you say?" Um, my presence online is not that great yet. I have an email address. What about Facebook? Facebook. I do a Facebook. You can find me under my name with a Z, Boris, with Z instead of an S, Dabrowski. And that's how you can find me if you feel like connecting with me. There you go. So, uh, so again, it's been a, a random, in the moment, Woke as fuck hangout. I think I've been, I need to start hang, just calling them hangouts, really, because it's just it, that's all it is. It's like that's a podcast, not really. I just start talking to someone. I'm like, we need to record this because it's good. So it's been another one. I hope you liked it. By now, uh, we're putting uh, this up on YouTube. So if you're listening to this and you want to see our beautiful faces, uh, you can go to the Woke as fuck YouTube channel. And we're there. There's also a mailing list you can join, where we we email you basically just about the episodes. So far, that's all email. But there'll be cool things later. So if you want to join the uh, email list, you should. It's a newsletter uh, on woke.as, www.woke.as. That's about it. Sending you lots of love. I hope it was good for you. It was good for us. It was good for me. And uh, see you in the next one. Ciao.